And there he is, Nelson Mandela. How often have we seen him doing that now? Is Sudan have qualified for the Africa Cup of Nations 2021. Does Bafana Bafana suck? Yes, they do. They they suck a lot. I wouldn't go as far as using the word sucks. On paper, yes. <laughs> I would never go as far as saying they suck, but damn, they've disappointed me a lot over the years. Back in 1996, Bafana Bafana won the African Cup of Nations and was ranked 18th in the world. But over the next 25 years, they have tripped down to 75th in the world, just below the United Arab Emirates and seven places behind Iraq. Yes, Iraq. We shot small rockets, AT4s. Of course, it hasn't all been bad since 96 though. We will always remember that wonder goal by Simpiwe Chabalala in the 2010 World Cup. It's Chabalala! Goal Bafana Bafana! Other than that one moment, there's been little to celebrate with our national football team. So we asked experts what they believe has contributed to the downfall of the once mighty Bafana and why some people really believe they suck. Since 1996, Bufana has alternated coaches 20 times over 20 years. That's averaging a coach once a year. Continuity and, and patience are, are, are key virtues to ensuring that a team performs. Teams that stick to one person for an extended period tend to reap the benefits of having that one vision that players buy into and actually get to understand over a period. And you're not going to get that if constantly you are chopping and changing. How do you even start building an identity if you know that if I fail in one campaign they're going to kick me out the door because every time we have a new coach I think we're meant to give coaches a four-year cycle you've got the AFCON and then you've got World Cup qualifiers in order to build because in that first year you're still seeing the players that are working for you and then by the second and the third year now they know what they're doing. Clive Barker did it and there was a bit of success. And over those next few years, we did have a little bit of a foundation. We don't anymore. And each coach comes in with his own pr uh, plans and his own book. But if you're only in your first year of that and then it ends and another one comes in, you're also confusing players. The country has produced the likes of Benny McCarthy, Quinton Fortune, Stephen Pinar, and most recently, Percy Tao. Yet, South Africa seems to lack the quality it needs in order to qualify for tournaments. We're calling 23-year-olds, 24-year-olds youngsters, whereas these guys are seasoned professionals across the continent. Africans are dominating for Liverpool, uh, Sadio Mane, uh, Mohamed Salah. Africans leading the line, scoring goals. They're showing us how it should be done. We have some fantastic 6 and 7 out of 10 players. Give us two 10 out of 10 players and maybe life changes in sport, changes in football. I think Bafana has actually overachieved sometimes over this, over this period, considering who we put on the field. In South Africa, you've got teams that refuse to field 22, 23 year olds because they don't want to lose matches and they keep them on the bench. And these are talented youngsters. And because of that, you have late development of players moving into the national team. Um, you look at our junior teams, um, our under 17s, our under 20s, our under 23s, they're playing in World Cups. A lot of these players will have progressed, have done this beautiful progression from under 17 to under 20 to under 23. And then that final step is where the problem starts. And it, it's a shame. SAFA is the governing body of South African football. How much responsibility should they take for Bufana's dismal form over the last few years? Absolutely, SAFA should take the responsibility. The back starts and ends with them. They've got to decide that if we've backed this coach and this coach struggles, did we give him enough? We need stability. And unfortunately, even though SAFA say they know what's right for the future of this game, I don't think the ones that are currently in charge are the ones to take it forward. Look, they are the custodians of football in this country and at the end of the day, the buck stops with them. 
the coach is usually the first person that we will always be upset with. That's the person that uh, we will always uh, direct our anger at. But at the end of the day, the coach didn't appoint himself. There's a hole somewhere in our, the development of our players and I, I can't pinpoint it to you, but I don't see a framework from Safa. No one's working in unison, you know. We're not doing it together. You've got these little silos that's producing great players, but at the end of the day, it's just not working as a nation. We're just not there. South Africa's got the best natural training facility in the world. It's the sun. Our kids are out, can be at least, outside all the time. And that's why we have world-class athletes in every sport. We have academies, but the fact is, is that we have an academy in Joburg, we have an academy in Pretoria, we have an academy in Cape Town, and it's almost as if they uh, speak different languages at those academies. And that's something that a lot of the smaller countries have, or smaller but more successful like European countries have got right is they've created some sort of national language of football. So where to from here for Bafana Bafana? Can they pull their socks up and reach the heights of South Africa's 96 heyday? Or are they doomed to fall lower and lower on the world rankings? For a while now, there hasn't been a real buzz around our national team. And there needs to be a buzz like the Springboks. There's so much buzz, so much love, but that only comes from winning. And I don't think Safa and Bafana Bafana has prioritized winning. The fact is, Pizzo Mosamani should be involved. Even if he's working at Al Ahli, he is one of our leading South African coaches. He should be involved with the national team. Benny McCarthy, as a young up and coming coach, should be involved with the national team. There's a, there should be more pride to, to support the national team. I, I don't have a problem if you attack a club, but when, when you attack the flag and the national team, you're attacking yourself, you know? Um, and, and, it, and it must affect the players. If we want to short circuit a lot of, a lot of what we are trying to do for the future, the best thing to do is to make sure that we pour our resources into that Olympic squad because for me that's the future of a squad because that under 23 team has got so many great players a lot of them who are playing in Europe now of course they miss out on an opportunity of playing at AFCON which is next year but we can make up for that by ensuring that the experience they pick up um, at the Olympic Games is used to maximum effect. But maybe if you give the youngsters a chance they're hungry they want to wear that shirt with pride. Some of the players within the national team know that they'll waltz in there and no one will ever challenge them for their position. So I think we need to stop saying, okay, we'll pick from our star players and then we'll add on. Pick the people that are hungry. Pick the people that want to play for the national team.